<laughs> even though I haven't edited the, edited these yet, I can hear that uh, I can hear that intermission music. <laughs> All right, monkey. I know I don't. I'm not drinking gin tonight. Are you drinking gin? Ooh. We like Mary Pickford. Okay. Our second feature tonight. Our second pair of features. I mean, it's the same story, but told differently. I only did the first poster. Even though the second poster is really good. Once it was human, even as you and I... The fly. I love this poster. The grid effect there. I don't know what it was for, but uh, very effective. <clears throat> the monster created by Adams Gone Wild. In Cinemascope and Terror Color by Deluxe. <laughs> Al Hedison, Patricia Owens, Vincent Price. Herbert Marshall, for your own good, we urge you not to see it alone. Oh, sliced my neck right there. See that? Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, let's separate. So first we're going to talk about 1958, 20th Century Fox. You heard of them? Yeah. That's not, that's not a small production company. <laughs> or distributor. Director Kurt Newman and starring, yeah, we went over that. Price stars as Francois Delambre, whose brother Andre is found crushed in a mechanical press, and it's no mystery who killed Andre. It was his wife, Elaine. <clears throat> the only question is, why? <laughs> they were happily married with a young son. She has no motive. Francois must know the truth, so he ditches Inspector Chira. I don't know why all of a sudden we're French. How did we get French in this movie? This was not the case with the... The newer version. Um, and he, he just straight up asks Elaine, what, what happened? She finally confides the whole sordid mess... Now this is like a, a a huge summary here, because like I think this movie's kind of told in flashback here, and I just kind of gave you the setup and yeah. Anyway, uh, mad science, a teleportation device, a freak accident, and a miraculous invention, now a complete disaster. But how do they get the inspector to believe all that? <laughs> when the only way to prove their story... And yeah, I remember somehow we ended up split in two here. Is to find this elusive fly with a white head. That's right, we're looking for a fly... In the garden. <laughs> that should be easy to find. Right? I'm going to go outside. Uh, I could find you a bee. But we're going to find a specific fly. <laughs> in the garden. Okay. Now I know. I didn't go into great detail here. 
But this is a great movie. A solid story, believable dialogue, and great actors. Uh, Price is no villain here. Uh, just a concerned uncle and brother-in-law. And the actress who plays Elaine pulls off the, uh, the fake madness. <laughs> and the, you believe me, don't you? Desperation. Yeah. Perfect. You believe me, don't you? <laughs> Four <laughs> for 1958. Let's not waste any time. So here we have another big budget remake. 1986, we're, we're uh, yeah, 30 years later. 30 ish years later. Uh, 1986, 20th Century Fox, <laughs> directed by David Cronenberg, who I'm a big fan of. Um, yeah, we need to get some more Cronenberg in the bucket here. I've been trying to get more uh, exploitation kind of movies. Oh, I thought the furnace was going to kick on. I was going to say, it's not that cold. Uh, starring Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis. So two weeks in a row we got us Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum. Am I saying it right? Sorry, Jeff. I don't mean to butcher your name. And we talked about last week in Invasion of the Body Snatchers how annoying he was. I know he's not really that annoying in real life. So that means he's a good actor. He was not annoying in this picture. Okay, it's a party. And Gina Davis's boss slash ex-boyfriend has sent her to look for leads. See, she's a reporter. She meets a less annoying, but still pretty quirky. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to see Jeff Goldblum not quirky. <laughs> uh who promises her the story of her career if she'll just come back to my place. Yeah, sure, Jeff. <laughs> We've all used that line. Well, he's Jeff Goldblum, so it works. And soon Gina is stripping off her stocking. Of all the things she could choose, she, like, hikes up her skirt and peels off her stocking. Yeah. So he can teleport it across the room. Pretty sly move on Jeff's part there. They make sweet love and he offers her a deal. Make it a book. Hold off, hold off on the newspaper articles and getting it out there before it's done. Make it a book, step by step. Follow me around. Sleep with me some more. <laughs> and you got exclusive rights. Uh, well, a misstep with the monkey, which is which is pretty gross, and yeah, he corrects it as a baboon. Um, and and second time around, success! Boom! Shot the baboon from that one to that one. Uh, but she has to run off to keep the boss from spilling the beans too soon. Yeah, he's kind of on to the story. Jeff, thinking that she still loves the guy, drinks all the champagne. Uh, yeah, gets drunk and, and steps into the machine. All good, right? Except for a fly gets in the machine with him. <clears throat> you know the rest. <laughs> We're not far off. I just told you the other angle from the uh, previous movie. Um, I saw this in the theater when it came out. Uh, yeah, and great, you know, 30 feet high on the fucking CinemaScope screen. I don't think it was 70 millimeter Dolby, but it was fucking big <clears throat> and gross. 
Um, I, I kind of forgot how gross this movie is. <laughs> the the uh, practical effects and makeup are uh, stunning. Not like a beautiful girl is stunning, <laughs> but stunning like, oh my god. Uh, stomach churning is what I wrote here. Yeah, that's that's a pretty accurate description. Great performances by all and a very, very good remake. Very good. I'm not going to say it's better than the original because, you know, Vincent Price. But it's as good as the original. And that's probably about as close as you can get most of the time <laughs> for <clears throat> 1986 version of The Fly. Also four stars. Okay, monkey. Yes, my name is Percival, thank you. It's Percival. That's how I shall be addressed. Let's see what we've got in store for next week. Nobody gave me any better options than this. What do you think of that one? I, I say no thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> I guess we'll I guess we'll find another one. Is that okay? Uh, yes, yes. I, I, I suppose so. All right. Okay. Now we're also <laughs> we're we're going back a ways on this one. Things to come. Uh. I don't think it was the 20s. We might have had sound. It was might have been the 30s. And the unknown world. I don't even know how I paired these together. But I think we're all black and white next week. Hear that, monkey? That means you, too. You'll be black and white. Okay, if you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up. If you hated it, you know, give us a thumbs down. You know all that crap. Leave me some comments. Tell me what's going on. Tell me how hot and bothered I am. Good night, kids. Uh oh, I missed.